self-improvement. Um, I look in the mirror and I am disgusted by what I am. And I decide that I'm going to improve because of this deep-seated either horror or revulsion or hatred even um, that I feel when I contemplate myself. So I choose to improve myself. Conversely, I look in the mirror and I see enormous potential. I, I see what I could be. Um, and I decide that I want to be what I can be. I'm not trying to escape my own repulsiveness. I am trying to embrace my own ideal, my own ideal self. The two are not the same thing. The desire for self-improvement is not as simple as we might think, and the impetus behind it, if you ask me, informs the end result. In fact, it probably decisively uh, influences the end result. I think that the first one, the first sort of fleeing from oneself, one's own inadequacies or perceived inadequacies, uh, is a recipe for weariness. Pursuing for the hope of positive gain uh, one's own ideal is a recipe for being energized, being empowered. Ask anyone who's ever lost a lot of weight. You're more likely to succeed and feel good about the obstacles along the road if you are imagining what you might be, as opposed to desperately trying to escape what you believe yourself to be. Um, Self-improvement based on a sense of guilt or disgust is almost the opposite of self-improvement based upon an active pursuit of one's own ideal. It's a, sort of a response to a small exchange that I had um, in the comment section of uh, my previous video. Self-improvement is a tricky thing. Are you reaching for the stars or are you trying to escape the filth that you're in? There's a big difference.